So you want to build a workflow, but you're like, which tool do I use? We know that Power Automate Cloudflow has been around forever and like, well, maybe I'll build it over there. But now in Copilot Studio, we've got these agent flows and they're like the same thing, but they're not, but they are. What does that all mean? <laughs> you probably don't know, but good news, I do. So what we're going to do today is walk you through the differences between the two and help you better answer the question of where should I build my workflow, right? We're not going to do super techy or anything like that. We're just going to try to get in there and make sure you understand what they both do and how they all work. If that sounds like fun, then let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. As you probably already know, Power Automate is Microsoft's tool in the Power Platform for building workflows automations. And there's a lot of different flavors to it. We're not getting all of those. But today what we're really looking at is the whole idea of cloud flows. That's where we go in here, we hit create, we choose one of these automated instant or scheduled flows. And then from there we define a trigger, right? A trigger is the thing that tells it to wake up and do its job. And then we add one or more actions to take, a, you know, do something, right? So that could be things like we build one every time we get an email, go and process that information, extract all the stuff and save it off to another system. Or every time a new file gets uploaded in SharePoint, analyze that content. Or every time someone clicks on my website form, run this workflow to add them into our database, right? Like anything and everything. There are literally thousands and thousands of connectors in there and we build automations all the time to let machines do what they're good at. And they can be anywhere from someone pressing a button, maybe inside of a Power App, pressing a button, create a PDF, to uploading or changing content, which could be changing stuff in SharePoint, Dataverse, SQL, any of the hundreds of the different data systems or it could be getting emails, app messages, and teams, it doesn't matter, or we can even have those run on a schedule, okay? So Microsoft's platform for building all this stuff, it's been here for a long time, uh, I think 2017, 2018, like long time, but this is what we use day in, day out, and we have literally built hundreds or thousands of these for customers over the years. So then all of a sudden, Microsoft shows up one day like, hey, over here in Copilot Studio now, we have this thing called Flows, and these are called agent flows. And you're like, what? Microsoft built a whole new workflow product? Like what? No, they did not. So what agent flows are is they took everything that was in Power Automate uh, cloud flows one day and they forked it, right? They just said, okay, we're gonna copy all that today. And then we're gonna start to build our own tooling on top of that. So inside of Copilot Studio, we have agent flows and they are I would say, this is my made up number, 98% exactly the same as Cloudflows. So this is what leaves so many people going, well, which one should I use? And that's what we're trying to get to the answer here. So the big difference here with agent flows is going to be, they've started to add more AI features. Now, don't get me wrong, Power Automate Cloudflows, we can use AI prompts, AI builder. We have a whole bunch of AI fe features over in Power Automate. So I don't think AI automatically means I have to go to agent flows. But if we go in here and say, I want to create a new agent flow, notice this is the same Power Automate Cloudflow designer if you're used to it, right? We'll just add a quick manual trigger here so we can quickly jump through it. And so when you go in here and add an action, there are a couple of new ones that are here that are exclusive to agent flows. And so right here is this whole human in the loop. If we look, there are two things here. There's request for information and running multi-stage approval. Now we're not going to get into those and teach them today, but Basically what request for information is, is the ability for you to build a action that will go send someone an email and they can provide the inputs right there in the email, whoosh, send it back to the agent flow and to continue on. The run of multi-stage approval here, the idea here is this is what I think of as AI approvals. So like Power Automate Cloudflows, we've had approvals for a long time where we go in, we specify this person does this, this person does this, right? We kind of build these chained out events. So what the difference here with the multi-stage approval is, is that when we go in here to set up the approval, we can do both manual stages, which is very similar to what we've been doing for a long time in Power Automate, but we now have this whole idea of an AI stage. So here I could specify in the AI stage that it has the ability to reason for itself. So if someone submits an expense report and that is, you know, it meets all the generic criteria, right? It was less than $100, it didn't have blah, 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 blah then just auto approve it, right? So if you those rubber stamp approvals, we can go ahead and let AI analyze the receipts, the content and take advantage of. And then there's a whole series of stuff here where I can escalate. So maybe it violates the content, but we don't wanna just flat out reject it. We then wanna send it to their manager to review because maybe there's an exception, right? 
So it has that whole uh, thing there to take advantage of. I'll, I'll put a link up there to a video where I have covered these a little bit so you can kind of get in and figure out how they really work. I'm not trying to teach them here today, but this is one of those pieces of the puzzle that is completely different, right? This does not exist in Power Automate Cloudflows. That whole idea of request for information that we talked about a minute ago, that does not exist over in Power Automate Cloudflows. And while you're watching this, you're thinking, man, I really wish that I could learn a lot more about agent flows and Copilot Studio, right? Good news, I just released a brand new on-demand course, uh, Copilot Studio. So I'll put a link, I don't know, up there somewhere to it. But it is a whole step-by-step -step how to get started building agents, conversational agents, um, autonomous agents, agents calling agents, computer use, MCP servers, agent flows, all of that is covered in great detail in that new course that I just released a couple days ago. So please go check that out. Now, there is another bigger difference. Today. And keep in mind, as I'm showing these differences, they're like, they don't seem a lot at the moment. And we're going to keep going to differences. But, you know, Microsoft is continually adding features, a whole bunch of new stuff coming to agent flows soon. But where we're at today, these are the things, right? So if we go back over here to my flows, sometimes when you're over here, you're going to see a new feature. So for example, let's go into one of these ones I built recently. That's actually for the class I was talking about. And so over here, when you're in a flow and we hit edit, over here on the right, sometimes you're gonna see this new thing called express mode. This is only gonna show up for agent flows. And so the idea here is that it is a preview feature, right? So we don't wanna count on it too much yet, but it is to speed up the execution of flows. Now, it doesn't work on all flows. It doesn't, uh, you know, it's not perfect yet, but the idea, I think, right, they haven't really told us, but I think they just throw a whole bunch more CPU capacity at it. So if you've got uh, operations like things they're doing like AI prompts or that, you know, there's a lot of compute time, then those type of flows, you can turn on this express mode and then it is going to make those process much more quickly. Because remember, when you're calling one of these agent flows from a, uh, Copilot Studio agent, they only have two minutes to finish their job. And so if you've got one that's on the bubble, you can hopefully turn on the express mode and then get it underneath the bubble so it is consistently able to finish in that two minutes window. Right? That's always been a challenge with whether it was running flows from power apps or now running them from agents. Sometimes, you know, they got to get done in those two minute windows and sometimes it's a little sketchy. So you got to got to kind of plan for that. OK, so speaking of all that fun stuff, so let's get back out of there. So Things to understand as well as we're kind of looking at this. Uh, the biggest difference I think for a lot of people is going to come down to licensing. And so the licensing side of the house is, you know, we know that with Power Automate Cloudflows, we've always been able to license those depending on the type of cloud flow. It was either licensed by the user that built it because it's just for them, or if they're sharing it with other people, then they've got to have licenses. There's processor licenses. There's a whole bunch of different complex ways to license different flows for different scenarios. When you jump over here into Copilot Studio agent flows, the licensing is 100% built off of Copilot credit consumption. So it's not about the users, it's not about the user license, it's not about who built it. Everything is going to consume Copilot credits. So if you move to building agents and you're running all of those consuming credits, then all these flows that support them just jump into that same credit story. So that's another consideration when you're thinking, all right, should I build this as an agent flow or a cloud flow? Because remember, 98% of them are the same. They can do all the same stuff, except for those few exceptions we've talked about. And there's a few more, but for the most part, they do the same stuff. So you might ask yourself, hey, maybe it's a premium thing you want to do and you don't have any premium flow licenses, but you got co-pilot credits. Then you could come over here and build that in an agent flow, right? Because an agent flow doesn't have to involve a Copilot Studio agent. It doesn't have to be called by an agent, it doesn't have to be triggered by an agent. You could just build the same exact flows. Every flow that you've ever built in Power Automate Cloud Flows can be built in agent flows. Big difference, they are just changing the licensing consumption. Now, when you're on this screen, you're only going to see the agent flows, right? The ones that are licensed with Copilot Studio. If we go back over here to Power Automate and we're to go to My Flows, we see both. So like this little RFI one, right? It's right here at the top over here because Power Automate shows you both the cloud flows and the agent flows. Now, if we were to click on RFI, if you're not sure, look right here, plan Copilot Studio. So this is how I know that it is an agent flow because it's on the agent flow, it's on the Copilot Studio licensing. Now, what is interesting as well, let's go back here to flows. 
And let's check out like this get office hour invite, right? Sign up for my training class. You get live office hours with me. And so this is the invite process that manages that. You don't care. Anyway, so when you're over here, right, if you hit edit here, so remember we're in Power Automate right now, notice that I have the ability to change the plan. So right now that flow runs on the owner plan, right? That's so I built it, it runs on me. I think it runs on me. Yeah, primary owner me. Um, so that is there. I can go down here and change this. If I want to get it off the flow licensing and into the Copilot Studio agent flow licensing, I can click that and hit save. Now, before you go clicking buttons, keep in mind that this is a one-way change. You can change a cloud flow into an agent flow, but you can't go backwards. You can't change an agent flow to a cloud flow. I can't undo this. So if I was to hit this, I would be changing the licensing forever. There is no revert back to the old way. So don't just go start clicking these buttons and be like, oh, All right, you'll get yourself into trouble. But know that if you do have existing flows today, existing cloud flows, and you wish that they were agent flows, you want to get them on this because you want to start using copilot credits instead of flow credits or flow licensing, then you can absolutely make that change. Okay, so let's cancel all that before I accidentally change it. All right, so if you have watched this, right, hopefully you've kind of got an idea, you know, at the end of the day, they both mostly do the same thing. The agent flow stuff, though, is continuing to get new investment, new AI features. They've got some new things coming down the pipe. Um, you know, I'm sure Power Automate Cloud Flows will also continue to evolve, but all the AI work, which is, you know, the future of work, <laughs> is going to be over on that side. Now, if you're sitting there going, I don't want to change, I don't need to change, that's that's fine, right? Most people are not in the place that they need to change today. But if you're struggling with that decision, you're not sure where to go build or if you need to be revamping or you need to be planning differently, remember, over here at Power Apps 911, we have services that will help you with that, right? We can get on with you from anywhere from a half hour to every day of the rest of the year and help you start to think through this. We've helped hundreds, thousands, millions, zillions, I don't know, a lot of customers over the last few years do this type of stuff. And so we will happily help you with it as well. But this is not a go change it today necessarily, but this is a understand as you start to build new stuff, where does it go? As you start to have licensing challenges, where does it go? You know, where, how are we handle this whole transition that you know AI builder credits are going away and becoming co-pilot credits? I hope you knew that. If you didn't, it's happening. And so how does that transition affect this as well? Like these are all the things I need you thinking about Overall, and I also just need you thinking about Copilot Studio and figuring out where does it fit in for your plans for this year. All right, so that's everything I've got for today. If you have any questions, comments, leave them below. I'm always happy to help you. Go check out my training class right over at training.powerapps911.com or our consulting services. Either one, we're happy to help you. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.